Thanks so much to Likewise for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be my May wrap up. But before we get into that, let me grab you a joke. How does NASA organize a party? They plan it. <laughs> like plan it, but then also plan it. Like in the sky, you see what I'm saying? Like Mother Earth. Awesome. All right, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Again, today's video is going to be my May wrap up. Also, if you see any sparkles on my face while I'm talking, it's just a makeup catastrophe. Don't worry about it. Um, but before we get into the May books that I read, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Likewise. It was actually so cool. They said that because of the great response that you all gave them on my last video with Likewise, they wanted to work with me again. So thank you to everyone that clicked that link in my description. And there will be another one in my description for this one. Just you wait or scroll down and, and see it yourself. <laughs> anyway, um, so Likewise is an app that helps you find books, movies, and TV shows that are similar to things you've already liked. So when you're setting up your account, you click on books that you've liked, movies, movies you've liked, TV shows you've liked, and then the app will say, well, if you liked that, you might like this. Um, so it helps you find new reads, new watches, not wristwatches, like new, <laughs> new things to watch. Um, and it's just awesome. It's really clean. It's really fun. And there's also this really cool section of the app that gives you like 25 books you should read in June or 25 books that celebrities recommend. So if likewise sounds like something you'd like, <laughs> you can click the link in my description to download it and get started with figuring out what your next book, next show, next movie might be. So thank you so much to Likewise for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into the books. Now let's talk about the first book I actually finished this month. And that was The Bride Twet. The Bride Twest? The Bride Test. I uh, read The Kiss Quotient in April and I was like, of course, you're gonna read the next book in May. And um, I'm so glad I did. I liked both of them more the second time around. I mean, I loved them the first time. But like when you go back and reread a romance, sometimes I find that you just like pick up on these really sweet moments that maybe you kind of skimmed the first time around and then it just hits you even harder the second time around. So I loved reading this a second time. It's such a sweet romance, so much at play and just wonderful. I cannot wait for the third book in this series to come out in August, The Heart Principle, so anyway. I did my pre-reading for the final book in the series and I can't wait for it. So there you go. The next book I read this month was Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, which is her longest book. <laughs> I presented on this book twice this semester and then wrote a 15 page research paper on it. Um, it basically follows this woman, Fanny Price, as she falls in love and how she's bullied by her family. Um, and you know, I think I prefer uh, Pride and Prejudice and Northanger Abbey over Mansfield Park. It was just a little too much. Like it's really long. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of like that old, like I like the guy, but he doesn't know. And there was just a little too much of that. So um, I still think it's fun. And I want to read all of Austin's novels very soon, um, just to say that I've done it. And so I'm glad that I read this one. And I think I wrote a pretty killer research paper. So um, yeah, Mansfield Park. Next, I did another reread. So I reread The Bride Test. And then I also reread Ready Player One this month, which was also for school. Um, in one class, you had to like write about something we had kind of talked about in class. And then for this class, you got to choose whatever text you wanted to discuss, which ended up being really cool. I wrote on Ready Player One, someone wrote on WandaVision, other people wrote on certain books and then certain movies and then certain psychology things and it was really cool. You could write about anything. Um, and so I chose Ready Player One. Um, and the basic argument for my paper was just that I think that Wade Watts exudes some quixotic behaviors in the text. 
Um, and being quixotic means that you emulate some of Don Quixote's experience by getting lost in the fictional world. Um, so like Don Quixote gets lost in his chivalric tales and then Wade Watts gets lost in the Oasis. And so I wrote this whole paper kind of talking about how this fictional character gets lost in a fictional world within the fictional world. Um, and I had a lot of fun writing it and I'm so glad I'm not writing it anymore. So anyway, first time I read it, I thought it was super fun. Second time I read it, also super fun. And I think it's a really good distraction from being mainly locked inside. It kind of gets you out of your own world, your own head, and it's just a fun time. So yes. Next, I read Severance by Ling Ma. Oh my god, what a cool pandemic book. <laughs> I kind of knew that there was like pandemic vibes in this book, but then I also was getting the like impression that maybe it had to do with office life. And I was like, how does this make sense? Like, how do these two things relate? And they relate in such a cool way in this book. Um, basically, you're following a main character after a pandemic is hit. So you're kind of like living in this dystopic world with the character. And then you get chapters before the pandemic hits while she's working in an office building, like at a pub publishing house. And then you kind of watch as the book goes on and each chapter continues, the time gap starts to shorten a little bit because like obviously, you're kind of watching a pandemic start and then you're also getting chapters where the p pandemic's already hit. And so you're watching as the story unfurls itself. And I thought it was really, really good, really interesting. Obviously it does have to do with a global pandemic. So if that's not something that you think would be healthy for you to read about right now, I understand. But if you think it sounds interesting, it really truly is. And I thought it was brilliant the way that like office life was weaved together with pandemic conversation. <laughs> I thought it was really cool. So loved it. All right, next up, we've got a pretty great romance and that is The Dating Plan. You all know that I was interested in it because of the cover. I mean, look at this thing. Amazing, the purple, the Golden Gate Bridge, it's all amazing. Um, and the story inside was also very sweet. I will say, however, content warning for physical abuse between a married couple, luckily not our main characters, but it is a side plot at one point. So if you think that's gonna be particularly harmful for you to read, maybe skip this one, but um, I just wanna let you all know that that is, that does come up in this book um, very briefly, but it's still there. Um, but the romance itself was really sweet. I really like um, when a romance is like two characters that have been secretly pining after each other their whole lives, um, but because of miscommunication, they are on bad terms and then you have to see how they get on good terms. Good and steamy terms, if you catch my drift. Um, so I thought it was really, really strong, really sweet. And I really liked the family dynamics because our main character, Daisy, has such a loving and supporting, fa supportive family. And then Liam, our other main character, um, doesn't have it. And so he finds kind of solace in Daisy's family. Um, and it's just over the course of his life, like ever since they were kids. So I, I just really liked it. I thought it was really good. Next, <laughs> we've got a book that was in my May TBR and it's a short story collection. And I am now obsessed with short story collections after the last two months. And that is The Refugees. <sighs> I'm just enamored by short story collections. I have two that I'm trying to read in June. Um, and I'd love to know if any of you have like really strong, strong or short story collections that you recommend, please let me know because I am obsessed. Um, the Refugees, I mean, it's a collection of short stories, so I can't really explain what it's about, but some of my favorite stories were the first one, Black Eyed Woman. I really liked the conversation around ghosts in that one. I also really liked um, Fatherland, one of the last stories. And then I'd love you to want me. <sighs> that one, that one kind of like was a moment where I was like, what is the real reality that we're living in, in that story, you know? And something I'm realizing about short story collections that I love is that it's like a novel or like a book representation 
of people watching. You know, like when you're on public transportation and you like see people out and you're like, I wonder what their story is. I wonder if they're in love. I wonder if they have kids. I wonder what they're worried about today. I think a short story collection does that where you just get a glimpse into someone's life, but you don't get the whole novel of their entire life. And I'm just, I'm falling in love with short story collections and this one did not disappoint. So highly recommend. Thank you, Alexandria, for recommending this one. I just thought it was so good. And then the final full book I read this month, I am halfway through another one, which I'll briefly talk about, but the last full book I finished this month was The Maidens. Oh my God. This is by the same author that wrote The Silent Patient, which I really liked. And <laughs> The Silent Patient doesn't even hold a candle to The Maidens. I loved The Maidens. I thought it was so fun and the mystery was great. And I thought the twists were great. But let me also tell you this, I uh, did figure out one of the twists. <laughs> uh, and it was a good feeling when it like, it struck me like a third of the way through the book and it was really just from two random sentences. And I didn't even think that the sentences were meant to give anything away, but the author was trying to convince me of something in the opposite direction. And I was like, you're really trying to sell me this story and I'm not buying it, okay? And I was half right. Okay, so I got half of the twist, correct. Um, and then the second half of the twist comes like two paragraphs later and <laughs> I feel like someone tripped me. It was so shocking when I read the second part of the twist. So I really, really liked this. It's basically, um, there's a murderer on the loose at Cambridge University and it's up to an aunt to figure out what's going on. And the aunt has a history at Cambridge University. Uh, she went there and now her niece is going there and she has a number one suspect and she just like, she needs to prove it's the suspect, um, but she's not a formal investigator. So um, everyone's putting walls up in front of her and um, it's really a delight. I, uh, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. And I also thought the atmosphere of like having this like thrilling mystery take place at Cambridge was really fun. So yeah, if you read this one, it doesn't come out until June 15th. I was able to get an arc and I'm so glad I did because it is phenomenal. Um, but if you do end up reading this, let me know if you were able to figure out the twist unless you were able to figure it out and then <laughs> you're like, yeah, Noelle, it was so obvious. Then maybe don't tell me cause it'll just hurt my feelings. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the last full book I finished in, uh, I was gonna say August, no, May. Um, and then I'm also halfway through One Last Stop, which is by the same author that wrote Red, White and Royal Blue. And I'm really liking it. It's really fun. It's really flirty. Um, and it just has like this cool, like time travel, time jumping element, um, which when I first heard about that, I was like, oh, it sounds a little like, maybe I'm not gonna love this. And now that we're in it, I'm like, okay, it's a romance, but also a mystery because how did this happen? Um, so I'm really liking it. I'll probably end up finishing it by tonight but I don't have a full rating for you yet. So um, I am vlogging myself reading it and the maidens and the refugees and the dating plan. Um, so there will be a reading vlog out soon where I talk about one last stop a little more, but I'll also tell you how I felt about it at the end of June. Anyway, that's it, my friends. I hope I wasn't talking too fast. I'm a little frantic right now. Um, but I hope you enjoyed. Again, thank you so much to Likewise for sponsoring this video. Please let me know, all of you, what your favorite book of May was and what you're most excited to read this summer, or maybe just this June, or maybe just next week. Just let me know what you're pining after literature-wise. I don't know if I'm making sense at this point, but I'm gonna take off now. <laughs> Love you all. See you later. Bye. <laughs>